This is Engineering Sustainable Futures is the latest STEM resource from the Royal Academy of Engineering. Some of the bigger challenges we face stem from how we interact with our environment and engineering is at the heart of finding sustainable solutions. In this resource you can find stories of inspiring engineers and bring the work that they do into your home or classroom. This resource is divided into three sections. Each section is inspired by a different engineer working in sustainability. And within each section, there are two large challenges linked to their work. So two are inspired by Olivia, two on Ines and two on Halvard. There is also a competition attached to this um, resource. However, we'll talk about that in a different video. So when you're completing the activities, it's really important to have access to a data hive green. Now this is a data logger and it's a sensor that you can use when you do some of the experiments. Now there's four different ways of actually using it. The first way is where we get instant data and on the top of this there are some buttons. So if I was to press the button for the light meter, when I put my hand over the light sensor we can see how that reading changes. And you can do the same for things like temperature as well. Now to get some really good data what we can do is we can connect this up to a laptop just using this USB lead. And what we can then do is we can get live data. And you can view all of that data by going to data.redfern.uk. You can also, from that uh, web page, have a look at live data that's being drawn on a graph. And also, you can look at data that you've saved. Now, if you're unsure how to use this at any time when you're doing the other activities, come back to this page and this gives you some really good hints and tips. But I found when I did this, it was really easy and simple to set up. And this allows you to get a huge amount of data about five different things. We can look at the voltage or the potential difference. We can look at temperature, electrostatic charge, light intensity and resistance. So we want to reward you for your commitment to STEM through digital STEM badges. You can get a badge for completing two of the challenges in this booklet, four of the challenges, and then six of the challenges. The digital STEM badges have got QR code embedded within them, so if you attach them to an online profile, someone will be able to see that this is something that you've received from the Royal Academy of Engineering for completing challenges in the This is Engineering Sustainable Futures resource. We have um, included in the booklet a STEM badge tracker so that you can keep track of which activities you've completed and what engineering habits of mind you've used. So engineering habits of mind talk about how engineers think and act. And you can visit the This is Engineering Sustainable Futures page to take the engineering habits quiz and find what your engineering habits are. Now, the first set of challenges are to do with Olivia. She's a real life engineer and you can find out more about her in the guide. She looks at plastics. Now, there are undoubtedly many advantages of using plastics in our everyday life, but there are many disadvantages as well. There's a fact sheet here, and we have different types of plastic that we use um, for things like milk bottles. Now, if you look at the bottom of a milk bottle, you'll see, moulded into the plastic, there's a number two inside a triangle. And that means that this one is made out of HDPE, high-density polyethylene, and if we look at different sorts of plastic around us in our everyday life, we'll see different numbers on the bottom of that packaging. And the first thing we're going to be looking at is maybe trying to work out which type of plastic is which. Now we're going to be doing that using the data hive. And we're going to be using the charge sensor. If I press this middle button down, we can see that it puts the red light here in the middle, which means that something is neutrally charged. But if we were to have two insulators and we rub them together, you might have done this already in school or even at home where you've got a balloon. If you rub it on your head, what we then have is some static electricity. If I was to bring this balloon towards the sensor, we can see how this changes and this actually shows it is highly negatively charged. So what we can do by rubbing different sorts of plastic together, we can see if they are positively or negatively charged. Indeed, if we were to look at this table here, what you can do is you can take two different insulators of perhaps two different sorts of plastic, you can rub them together, and then you can note down if things are positively or negatively charged. And this then gives us an indication of which type of plastic something is made out of. Perhaps you had part of a bottle, but you couldn't tell from the bottom what type of plastic was uh, moulded on the sign. 
even if you just had a small sample of that plastic, it then starts to give you an indication of what type of plastic it is, and that's how they actually start to categorise and sort out plastic at recycling centres. Olivia spends a large part of her job investigating what we throw away and what happens to our rubbish and recycling after it has left our homes. She's really interested in something called the circular economy, rather than linear economy. So linear economy means that we make something, we take it and then we dispose of it, whereas a circular economy means we make, use and then recycle that. Why this is so important is that things that are within a linear economy mean that we have to try and dispose of them somehow, and many of these items take hundreds of years, if not millions of years, to decompose. So have a look at this waste timeline and try and work out which of these items take how long to decompose. That's anywhere between one month to over a million years. Even though sustainability is an important topic at the moment, can't help but notice every time I go to a shop or supermarket just how much of the packaging in particular is still designed with a linear economy in mind. Most plastic packaging has a lifespan of a mere minutes. Have a think about a food item or perhaps an electrical item that you recently purchased and what the packaging was that it came in. Can this packaging be easily recycled or could it be reused? And how could you redesign that packaging so that it fits into a circular economy model? Now the next section of the book looks at some challenges to do with Inez and she has a company looking at how we can store energy in large batteries. Now we don't have a large battery for this challenge but we can look at maybe the voltage of something that you might use at home, one of these AA batteries. Now we're going to be doing that using the data hive and the leads that come with the set. So what I'm going to do is connect these up to the number one position and then this gets a little bit fiddly so it's a good idea to have a partner to hold the terminals across the end of a battery and what we can then do is we can test that to see if it's a new battery if it's half full or if it's completely empty. And if I press the number one button, we can see that this one actually has a value of about 1.6 volts. So we know that that is a new battery that we could use. Now, this is a little bit fiddly. So what you can actually do is maybe try and design something to be your battery holder. So when you put different batteries in, you can do it on your own. So you can put this into some kind of holder, you press the button and then you can test to see how full that battery is. But we can also make our own battery as well. And we can do this using a lemon. And this one here, I have two different sorts of metal to be my electrodes. I've actually got a one pence coin and a screw. And we've put this into a lemon, which is going to act as an electrolyte. Now, when we test this lemon cell and we press the button here, we can see that this actually has a voltage of one volt. Now, what you could do is you can investigate this perhaps by using different types of metal. You could use maybe a different fruit, perhaps a lime, or you could even see how far apart you put your electrodes. Now the other challenge that you can do as a little bit of an extension is to actually use your lemon cell or your lemon battery to light something up. So maybe you have a red LED. One lemon on its own might not light it, but maybe you could have a series of lemon cells all joined end to end to have an even bigger voltage. So this one over here is about making your own battery. Although we in the UK are very fortunate to have instant access to electricity and heating in our homes, this is not the case for many places around the world. Ines was inspired and motivated to want to tackle this problem in, and ensure that everyone around the world has regular access to reliable, clean and safe energy. Even if our homes are lucky enough to have access to instant energy, it is important for us to be mindful of how we use both electricity and gas around our homes, schools and workplaces. The environmental impact of being energy efficient is significant and in the UK it is said that 40% of emissions come from households. So for this challenge we're going to use the data hive green again and we're going to look at the temperature sensor. So as long as the battery is plugged in I can get instant reading for temperature by pressing the second button. However what we want to do is analyse data over a prolonged period of time, for example 24 hours. So if I'm doing this activity in school, for example, I could put this um, data hive in a classroom somewhere, perhaps by a window, and after the 24-hour period, I will take the data hive and plug it into a computer using the micro USB. I can then view and analyse the log data and have a look and see if we're using heating at school most efficiently. The final challenge in this section asks you to match different graphs 
two different scenarios. So if, for example, there's one scenario that says the heating is on all the time, and which graph out of A, B, C or D do you think represents that scenario? Now, the last set of challenges are to do with Halvard, and this is looking at how we can use robotics to monitor the state of plants. And this is really important because in order to have the right yield from a crop, we want them to be growing in the right type of soil and have the right amount of moisture. Now, the first thing is we're going to be looking at acid versus alkali soil. So I have my soil sample here, and what I can do is I can mix this with some water, and then I can add either some bicarbonate of soda or some white wine vinegar, and we can see if it fizzes up to see if this soil is slightly acidic or slightly alkali. But that's just a bit of a rough test. We can actually find a better value for the pH of the soil by making our own indicator. And to do this, I'm going to be using some red cabbage. So the way we actually make our indicator is we chop up some red cabbage, And then we can add some of this to a blender with a small amount of water. And if we strain this into a container, do you mind? Thank you. What we can now do is we can add our indicator to different chemicals or different solutions. If I squeeze some lemon juice into a different container and add some of our purple liquid, we can see how that goes, that pink colour, which shows us that this is acidic, as we'd expect. So what you can do is you can make your own indicator, add it to different liquids to see if they are alkali or acidic. The next challenge is looking at the moisture level of soils. So as you all know, Plants need a uh, soil that is watered to grow and we're going to develop a system that will check the moisture level of your um, soil for your house plants or perhaps you're growing vegetables at home or at school and we're going to do this using the data hive and we're going to use the resistance sensor. So moisture or water um, is a conductor so if there is, um, I'm going to use the two crockleys and attach them to where it says two on the data hive. And as water is a conductor, if I have some water in between these two crockleys, I will see that the resistance is very low. If we just try pressing the resistance now, we'll see the, the resistance is really high because there's nothing between the crockleys other than air, and air is not conductive. Before I do this activity with my houseplant, um, I'm just gonna check the resistance of different things. So one thing that could be quite good to try is pencil because graphite in a pencil is a good conductor and I'm gonna do some thick shading on a piece of paper and I'm gonna take the crock leads um, and then with the help of a partner pressing the resistance button I should see that um, as the graphite is conductive as the crock leads get closer together the resistance decreases. And now I'm gonna test the moisture levels of the soil in, in my house plant. So I need something to actually be able to attach the crock leaves to the soil. So paper clips work quite well. Um, folded these out and then I'm going to put them at two different points in the soil. And then I'm going to take the crock leaves and attach them to either one of the paper clips. And then I'll press the resistance button. And I can see the resistance is really high. That means that and I can see that, that my soil is really dry and I need to water my plants. So we can get an instant reading to find out where there are soil is dry and whether we need to water our plants. What we can also do is use the data hives logging function to find out what happens over a, a given period of time, for example, 24 hours. So I can leave my data hive set up like this um, and then I can come back to it, plug it into the computer, visit data.redfront.uk and look at the data and find out how quickly does the, the soil dry out um, and how often do I need to water different plants that I have? As well as nutrients from the soil, plants also need sunlight to be able to grow. Now different plants need different levels of sunlight. So for this challenge, you're gonna find out where the best place is to place different plants around either your school or at home. The Data Hive Green has a light sensor, which you can test out straight away by pressing the button that is closest to the light sensor button. 
So if I press it, I get an instant reading for something called light intensity, which we measure in lux. If I cover that sensor, I can see the light intensity drop down. As well as an instant reading, I can also record this data. So I want to find out whether um, a specific place that I have in mind gets a lot of sunlight because I'm thinking about putting a sunflower there. I could leave my data hive there for 24 hours or even a week and then come back to it, connect it to the computer using the micro USB and analyse that graph data and see what happens to the light intensity and think whether that place is a good place to put my sunflower or perhaps a different plant might be better suited there. And the very final challenge in the book is looking at the colour of objects. Now this might be useful if you had a fruit or a vegetable and you wanted to tell if it was ripe. Now a red object reflects red light, a green object reflects green light. If you were to take your data hive, there's a setting where you can actually turn on the LEDs and we can then measure the amount of reflected light that then lands on the light sensor. So if you do this in a box, it cuts out any ambient light. And if you were to illuminate a tomato with red light, if you have a red tomato, it's going to reflect that red light back to the sensor and you're going to get quite a high value. If, however, you had an unripe tomato, which was green, less light is going to be reflected and you get a lower value of light intensity. So what you can do is make your own device, which maybe gives you an indication of how ripe a certain fruit or vegetable is by the amount of light that it's reflecting. The digital copy of this resource is available online for free for anyone to download on our resource hub. To get the physical copy, along with 15 of the data hive, you just need to join our Connecting STEM Teachers program. It is free for any teacher in the UK to join. And more information about that is available also on our resource hub.